the wellhead has its API number. The metalwork has not been painted. The condensate tank has the secondary containment, so it looks like it could maybe be a little bigger. The tank has a uh, containment has a rainwater drain. A recurring problem with this operator is during reclamation they run a bulldozer through the buried pit waste that's pit liner and then behind it is an open bare area where there's exposed pit waste the pit waste is high chloride so nothing will grow i'm on the cut slope looking down over the well the tank and the well are to the right and the the exposed pit waste is to the left. More pit liner. And this is the open bare area. I'm going to be taking a soil sample from this spot. This is well, well 1200 in Putnam County. Down in the distance is a deer feeding station and there's the separator and a device for recording the production of the well. The well heads to the right. And a 100 barrel tank. No maintenance. It has a dike, no rainwater drain. There's water coming close to where the pipe is coming up out of the ground there. This is the casing head for the well, and as you can see, it's leaking a fair amount of oil. It's down to the second level casing head. I don't see any bubbling. The API numbers on the ground, they use nylon ties, and the nylon degrades with sunlight. It's producing. You can hear it. The tank's secondary containment, because it doesn't have a rainwater drain, is filled so that about a quarter of the tank is underwater. If the tank had a spill or overflowed, there's about a foot or less of capacity in this containment dike for the contents of the tank. It's possible, too, that because of the condition of the tank, the bad rust and who knows what it looks like where it's been sitting in water that it could develop a leak further down and not be spilling out of the top. It looks like the property owner has tilled the surface here for creasy greens. At the bottom, in the end of this field, there's bits of pit liner, but most of the pit liner is in this field. You could see a black section right there in the lower right. And uh, pieces of pit liner are scattered throughout, fairly substantial pieces. It's not a place where I'd be quick gardening. Lots of deer tracks in here, uh, so I'm going to take some samples. This is well 5714 in Kanawha County. In front is the wellhead. Behind that is a separator and a device for uh, measuring the production flow. And to the right is the condensate tank. In 2009, we examined the site because of uh, exposed pit waste uh, and pit liner in the area that you can see here that's barely vegetated. It was supposedly remediated in 2010, in April. What I'm seeing now is normal vegetation, a bare area, and then patches of uh, normal vegetation, patches of uh, straw, and patches of uh, more bare area. This is approximately the area where we found the highest concentration. It was uh, well over 2,000 milligrams per kilogram 
of chloride. It also had a high arsenic and uh, a high lead. The arsenic was 40 times residential level as uh, determined by the EPA. There's uh, bits and pieces still of pit liner in here and the orange plastic is, is remnants of a fence that surrounded the pit when the well was originally drilled. What happens because of the high chloride in the soil, the vegetation won't grow. That was the outermost edge of the pit liner. This is more pit liner. This is about the center of the pit. There's some deer tracks. The deer are attracted to the minerals and the chloride in the soil. Uh, of course, they don't want the, the lead and the arsenic. There's not that much tracks. Uh, it's seasonal. That gray soil is, is what appears to be pit waste. It was a finely ground gray material. It was about two inches below the surface. What it looks like they did is removed soil from part of the pad and added it to another part. I'm going to, to dig down a little and see if I can come across the pit waste. I will be taking a couple of samples.